Welcome to another episode of Machine Learning Made Simple. Today we will be talking about permutation-based feature components and a very convenient way to figure out how important a particular feature or variable is to your overall machine learning model. So I, um, our uh, permutation-based importance is defined to be the decrease in model score when a single feature value is randomly shuffled. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll, the following are the steps and a quick example of how that works. So uh, the are to actually figure out what the step is, we first have to train the model, then we have to shuffle the values in the single column, as mentioned in the definition, and we have to try predicting using that data set. And then we calculate the error, which would basically be the predictions and the true target. And we see, okay, how, how different is it? So if our, well, if our error is large, that means we have a model value that's, that is, sorry, we have a variable that is very important. Otherwise it's not maybe so important. And, you know, obviously we have to undo this uh, shuffling and uh, repeat this over all columns because if we just keep shuffling multiple columns then we're just adding noise to our data which is not useful in this particular instance so let's take an example uh, so i found this image online and it seemed pretty great so i'll be using this so imagine that we wanted to predict the number of socks someone owned at age 10 and to do so we had a database a data set with a bunch of features, one of which was the height at age 10. So now I think we can roughly say that maybe socks owned at age 10 would be somewhat correlated with height, we don't know. And to find out what we're doing is we've shuffled the data sets around. Okay, so if we do have, if imagine the height was super important to figuring out how many socks you own, all you have to do is take, okay, I have, uh, when I've moved my 147 to my 155 column, with this new data set, which is everything over here, except, you know, 182 height at age 20, 147 height at age 10, dot, dot, and all the other things from this particular row. What is the new prediction? And if, imagine my new prediction is closer to 10, which is what this column has, uh, this row has. That means my 147 is heavily skewing my data. Therefore, we can say that this is very important. If our 147, if on the other hand, our socks owned was close to 20, like very close to 20, like maybe 19 or 18, or maybe some decimal like 19.7, then we can safely say that maybe height at age 10 is not very important. Obviously, this would depend on the number of variables uh, etc. But this, this is just a very quick example. So uh, some important points to note about this is this this uh, methodology itself is very easy to implement. Since we're effectively just shuffling data around and retraining with the same model, this can be applied to every model. Uh, that's an interesting contrast with uh, the tree-based feature importances, which use uh, GENE inequality I believe it's called, uh, or basically feature impurity, where uh, uh, which you know leverages the tree structure, but on the other hand cannot be implemented with other kinds of models, you know, and uh, this approach tends to have problems when dealing with strong correlations, which when you think about it intuitively would make sense, because we are basically relying on how much does my performance drop when I shuffle one column value around. And if we have multiple columns that are strongly correlated, then maybe those other columns will work out. And I'll be getting more into details on the next slide. So yeah, obviously we have the six, uh, what I was saying that when we shuffle one column, the other columns will still give, ac you know, technically access to this thing. So maybe it's not going to, it's not going to lower your score as much as it should. So let's take an example for this. So if you were to write a machine learning model that predicts which national team a football fan supports, two maybe important features uh, might be, is the person a Real Madrid fan and is the person 
uh, does the person believe that Cristiano Ronaldo is the greatest of all time? So, you know, if you grew up, uh, if you went to high school and grew up when I did, uh, you, you would know that, uh, you know, these two things are very correlated because a lot of Madrid fans would believe that Cristiano is the GOAT and lots of, uh, you know, when we started following football around 10 is when Ronaldo moved to Madrid. So a lot of uh, Ronaldo fans became Madrid fans. So, you know, these are somewhat correlated ideas. And uh, so if we change one of these values, just because the other one is still intact, the model, you know, might not exactly, uh, the model will not tweak the prediction as much as it should. So if you, if you tweak, uh, is Ronaldo the goat to know? And then, like, logically speaking, it, it might, uh, you know, shift your allegiance from Portugal to something else entirely. It should, but it will not in your overall, uh, this thing, because uh, you'd still have all these other features. So yeah, performance will drop quite a bit. Uh, the model value will drop quite a bit. And so this is a possible solution that is implemented, which is we cluster our uh, features in by correlation or collinearity or whichever other metric we'd like to use, ideally a combination. So, okay, we have uh, you know cl uh, different clusters and we basically just pick one variable from each cluster. And what this does is this allows us to get away with, you know, this allows us to basically permute, permute over all the different uh, cluster representatives and still give a rough idea of how important this is. Naturally, this can be very, like, you know, this can be very problematic because it can lead to a loss of information. So ideally, you'd want some kind of a stacking or an ensemble where you're picking different uh, cluster variables, comparing them and creating some kind of a more comprehensive analysis, maybe with other machine learning models as well. Uh, this, such a step would be, uh, we kind of do the, implement this with our um, uh, up, with my upcoming tool data discovery where, you know, we analyze a, we analyze a data set and feature importances over multiple different models to, and with some other analysis tools to figure out what's going on. And this is always a recommended step when dealing with high core related models, or at least just to keep in the back of your mind. And that's about it. Thank you for watching. Uh, these are all the social medias you could reach out to me with. I will be linking all of these down below. Have a good day.